Hi folks, I'm Simon Woodhead, founder of Simwood. Now, uh, Alan's asked me to rant for about five minutes on the topic of, of, of serverless. Um, the good thing about this format is that I don't know what my fellow panellists have, have said, so, so hopefully I'm not going to upset anybody. Before we, before we get started, I, th I think we need to define some terminology. Um, first off, cloud. Now, I've dismissed cloud in the past as just somebody else's computer. And some of those people that, that worship at the altar of cloud have taken offence at me having the audacity to show it such disrespect. But I stand by it and faced with the option of using my own compute on my own network over using somebody else's, I've always opted for using my own stuff. But where the cloud has scored and got really, really strong over time is around the tooling. And I've always aspired and, you know, have often said um, that I'd like to have cloud technology on that. Indeed, that's where Simwood is today. We're moving to Kubernetes on net and in the cloud. And by doing so, we can run things locally first but run hardware far hotter than we have in the past because we can burst into the cloud when we when we need to. And we're also using that cloud to, to test new markets rather than deploying network and, and, and physical um, hardware over there. And that kind of hybrid approach makes absolute sense to me, although I'm pretty sure the cloud extremists will describe me as a fair weather cloudist. Now, even with some of the great packaging that exists in the cloud, we're still constrained by the provisioned dimensions of any virtual machine, and they need to be always on. So take Amazon's relational database service, RDS, as an example. It sounds cool, but all it's really doing is spinning up pre-configured virtual machines of a size that you define. Turn it off and it doesn't work. Don't dimension it big enough for your biggest query and unsurprisingly, it won't be big enough to process it performantly. And these problems are little different to building an on-net cluster. It's just somebody else's computer after all. Now serverless is, is a bit different some might say that serverless is cloud where you don't control the server. And that's partly true, but I don't think it's, it's strong enough. At least it's as true as saying that Uber is a carless technology. Now, if cloud is Uber, then frankly, serverless is teleportation. Not only do you not need to control the server, you don't really know or care how the service works. The distance it can take you in the teleportation example is, is effectively unlimited and it's there waiting for you at zero cost until you need it. Unlike the cloud analogy where it's sitting there waiting for you to, to use but costing money to do so. So take the database um, example from, from before and to give you, you know, a real world um, anecdote. I've had certain queries in the history of Simwood that I've wanted to run and I've found that as we've got as we've got bigger and time has gone on we've had more in the way of computing resource on that so you might think those queries were easier but of course the business has got bigger as well so there's far more data to crunch to to do them um, and just one example of those, um, you know, one of those those queries. I most recently had it running on net for approximately two weeks. And after two weeks, I was no closer to getting any results. And I was running it over a very, very short time period. That's when I discovered, uh, well, didn't discover, thought I'd try um, Google BigQuery, which is a, uh, a Google data store, um, but serverless rather than, say, Amazon RDS, where it's essentially provisioning cloud instances. 
and I thought I'd put this thing to the test. So this query that had ran for two weeks, querying a very short period of time, I think it might have been 24 hours or 48 hours, I decided to do against every CDR ever, just to test um, how this thing would perform. And it returned me results in less than 20 seconds. And I was completely blown away. And it does that because it's, it's provided as a service and I don't really need to know or care what goes on behind the scenes. They charge me for the time the query is running or more particularly for the RAM that the query, the query uses. But if that query needs 100,000 CPUs for 20 seconds to, to process, the service will provision 100,000 CPUs um, behind the scenes. And contrast that with having 100,000 CPUs on net or 100,000 CPUs provisioned in VMs sitting in the cloud waiting to be used and serverless wins hands down. I think I would describe it as the promise of cloud that we've been made for, for so many years uh, delivered. And I get I get really excited telling that story because the underlying technology is pretty cool. But that doesn't mean I'm now a cloud extremist and going to burn every physical computer that I see. On the contrary, uh, Simwood still maintains metal on that and will do for a good while yet. But we also make use of some serverless. And as I confessed earlier, we have a little bit of cloud too. You see, think the thing is, it's about using the right tool for the job. Or better still, tying those tools together in a hybrid way so they're seamless. Now, the applicability of serverless in telecoms is an interesting one because the reality is that by almost any definition you choose to give it, including my own, making a phone call has always been serverless. Back in the day, other people would physically patch circuits together to join the various parties. Yeah, these were made electronic um, as switches, but they still didn't involve servers. So any telephony operator could be described as serverless because their own customers have never needed to own, procure, control a server to make a phone call. Yeah, my auntie doesn't pick up her rotary dialed phone and worry about running out of disk space during, during the call. It's only in the last 20 years or so that we've decided to, to introduce um, servers to this, to this process. And so in and of itself, making telephony serverless, frankly, is not anything big or clever, in my opinion. And that brings me on to CPaaS, which frankly is not only a pleonasm, you know, when is a communications platform not being presented as a service? Uber don't call themselves taxi as a service. But it's also a euphemism for the other C word, if you ask, if you ask me. Frankly, I, I take offence at being called a CPaaS, even though for 24 odd years we would do what they claim to, they claim to do. And my point here is that at some point we've let this industry get infiltrated by marketing people and chances. And they've taken great technology and smothered it in bullshit. And it, it really makes me sad, not to mention a little bit, little bit cross. So yeah, serverless is really exciting, right until every chancer in the market sees it as the latest label to add to their service to sound, to sound big and clever. It really has no place in conventional telephony because conventional telephony already is serverless, or at least already was serverless. However, there's elements of modern telephony that, that do need a computer and can be computationally intensive. Uh, translation, transcription, sentiment analysis, or frankly, any, any other variety of machine learning based technique that we're still to we're still to dream up or use servers all need computation so these services over and above um, basic 
telephony are really exciting and the natural um, home or way to deliver them has to be serverless. And I really look forward to seeing those services develop. That's all I've got to say, except say that I am available for rants on pretty much any topic you'd, you'd care to mention. Uh, just get in touch. Thank you.